CSS35, which is the first talk CSS of uh, 2019. Um, I've seen some of you before, and then some of you have seen before. So uh, if you're new, thanks for coming. If you come before, thanks for coming again. Uh, so we are, okay, I, I say we because we, I used to have a co-organizer. His name is Chris, Chris Leonard, but he has since moved back to Melbourne. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll get him to dial in, but he claims that 10 o'clock is a very late time, so he don't want. But we'll see how. So anyway, I'll still use the I'll still use we. So we are Singapore CSS. We have uh, some semblance of social media. So on the Twitters, you can call us Singapore uh, CSS. If you like to tweet things, you can use the hashtag. Yes. Um. Oh. I have. I also have a DAO. I have a DAO because I once gave. I once hosted at uh, WeWork. So WeWork is a co-working space, and then there were a bunch of uh, angmos at the back who weren't part of the meetup, but they just hang around to listen. And then the singlish show meter was up to maximum, so they turned around and asked, told their friend, "I have no idea what she's saying." So there's a meter. There is there's a Queen's English, and then there's a singlish. Your your singlish your hawker uncle says. So you all can choose the DAO. I will try to put it like somewhere in the middle. For the benefit of the people who are not native uh, to Singapore, um, yeah. So, uh, can you you can uh, request the English meter to change? Uh, I will I I take request because it's a free country. Wow, this is very hard. Eh? Spatial awareness. So um, we have a guitar channel like our sister meetup. Talk.js, uh, who are they are also on Gita. So what you can do is you can ask any CSS questions uh, any time of the day, even during working hours, because most of us inside there don't like to work. We would rather answer your CSS questions. So feel free to put an answer in, uh, put a question in if you want. Um, our we have an official website. Uh, it's at singaporecss.github.io because we have no budget and GitHub hosts us for free. Yeah. Uh, so this is our standard shoutout page. We, uh, we want to shout out engineers.sg, this uh, wonderful lady here. Engineers.sg is a completely volunteer-run uh, organization that aims to record every single tech meetup in Singapore. So if you have another meetup that you wanted to go to today, and you chose to come here, first of all, thanks, you are the best. And if you, but if you want to watch the other meetup, it's probably being recorded by another lovely volunteer from engineers.sg. As a volunteer-led team, they are always looking for more volunteers. So if you are interested in playing with all this very cool equipment and dealing with technical difficulties, you please talk to her uh, afterwards. So long, long ago, half a year ago maybe, there's another website called webuild.sg. So webuild.sg used to collate information about all the tech meetups and events in Singapore. And then there's a lot of data, and then you can go and like drill into, oh, which day has the most meetups, which time is most popular, which venues um, can are available for hosting. So sometime last year, um, there's a merging. So now webuild.sg has merged into uh, engineers.sg. So all the information now lives on the engineers.sg uh, website as well. So we are still going to continue to use this logo indefinitely because I spent some effort making it and I don't want to waste the effort. I will amortize it for the next year. We also want to shout out uh, a gentleman named Chion who's uh, today he's not here, sometimes he shows up. Mr. Chion, surname Lim, is the uh, swag king of Singapore. So odds are the, any of the stickers that are related to a tech meetup in Singapore, probably is he print one. Sometimes you also print t-shirts. Uh, I think he has experimented in socks before, but basically he's sweat king of Singapore, and whether he likes it or not, we will shout him out every month. Today, you are in the lovely offices of SP Digital. You have been fed by the funds from SP Digital. So when you see Mr. Sheldon Cheng, who is hosting us tonight, he all his colleagues have gone home, but he's stuck here with us. So when you see him, please say nice things to him. That's the man right there standing at the back. Okay, so if you have never come here before, um, we have this thing called CSS Color of the Month. So the story goes that there are 148 named CSS colors in uh, the specification. So that's enough for 12 years worth of CSS meetups. We are only on year three, so we still got a lot of colors to go. I think we'll run out of meetups before we run out of colors. So anyway, this uh, for this month, the uh, CSS Color of the Month is called Orange Red. Orange Red, because Chinese New Year coming, we want a festive color. So 
how CSS colors name colors work is that instead of typing a hex code like FF4500, you can use the word orange red. Orange red, one word. No dash, no underscore, no space. Orange red. And then you will get this beautiful effect on your web page. If you don't like hex code, you can use RGBA. RGBA 255-6901 give you exactly the same effect. CSS color of the month. Orange red. What -a? And then, oh, okay, okay, this is a new slide I've added. Ah, now there's an agenda slide. So we are not as any howly as last year because it's 2019, we must like mature. Yeah, going on year three. So today, there is me. This first thing will never change, regardless of who the speaker is. I will force you all to sit through at least 15 minutes of me talking about news on HTML and CSS. Um, if you don't like it, you can walk out. But you're already here. You already eat the food. So just stay 15 minutes only. But anyway, today we have two talks. One, well, not me, which is great. Because if nobody wants to speak, you're going to end up with me. So this is a very good reason to sort of like say yes when I harass you to talk next month. Today we have two speakers, and uh, we have Dominic, the handsome German sitting in the second row. He's going to be talking about CSS in JS. So it's, um, it may, be, may or may not be a controversial topic, so it's very exciting, so we must stay. And then we also have a very exciting topic by Ayaka, who is somewhere there. Yeah, she's talking about CS, CSS 3D transforms for beginners, which is also going to be very fun. So yes, moving on. Um, that's the agenda. Announcements will come next. So at the end, if anybody want to say anything at all, you want you looking for a job, uh, looking for employees, you cat having a birthday, all can announce. All everything goes. So we'll do that afterwards. So okay, first things first. News time. Ah, so stock CSS holiday in December. So we January to November every month never fail. Then December off because everybody needs a rest. So anyway, it's about two months worth of news. So I'll try to run through as quickly. So since since um, November, the latest Firefox is now uh, 65. And 65 comes with a bunch of bug fixes. But there's also a new feature, which I, I personally like a lot. It's called the Flexbox Inspector. So um, if you do not use Firefox as your development browser, you could consider trying it out. By right, you should be using because you must test in every browser. Ah, so you should have at least have Firefox installed in your computer, even if you don't use it. That's another matter. So anyway, there's this thing called Flexbox Inspector. So it's the only browser right now that has such a feature. Which, because for Flexbox, unless you really sit down and go and understand everything, sometimes it might be a bit confusing. So the Flexbox Inspector is very similar to the Grid Inspector because it's the same team build one. But it will give you like lines, flexbox lines, and some information in how your flex items are behaving to help you debug if your um if when you use flex it doesn't seem to obey or it doesn't react as as you would expect it to be. So you can give it a try. As long as you're on 65 and above, you should have this. So what you will have is when you open your dev tools, display flex, there will be an icon next to the word flex. So when you click it, right, you activate the inspector and you will see the outline for or any flex uh, formatting context you have on your page. The rest are bug fixes. So, okay, I want to point everyone's attention to this thing called a CSS environment variable. This is, uh, it looks like a function, but it actually came about because of Apple Watch. Um, so there's Samsung, Apple, they have made their smartwatches sort of like web enabled. So you can kind of browse stuff. Uh, if your eyes are very good and you want to screen at your tiny screen, I guess you could do that. Um, but clearly there is some CSS support required for these devices. So um, CSS environment, environment variables is comes actually came about when iOS did that notch thing. Then a lot of people were like, wow, why is this notch? And they are think the notch is blocking my content. And then so the uh, WebKit team had to come up with a, a, a spec to sort of set, deal with the notch. I mean, I think if more phones have the notch capability, more people are going to talk about this. So we shall see. We shall see. Um, in other browsers, so Opera and Chromium, Blink and Blink. Bling lah, bling lah, okay? Uh, so, Opera now supports color fonts. Okay, what is color fonts? Color fonts is, oh, I don't have internet. 
if you go to our lovely website, singaporecss.github.io, on Firefox, you'll see that the word talk CSS is in color, but in Chrome, it's black. Because Chrome, Chrome does not support color fonts. And the best part is that H support color fonts. Huh, Chrome, what are you doing? But anyway, so now Opera also supports. Eventually, Chrome is going to get around to it. Like, I think they got priorities, you know? Um, if you use linear gradients, uh, there's now, uh, you can use a shortened syntax. So linear gradients is, you can put as many colors as you want, and then you put a percentage to set where the color stock is. Uh, I think the spec writers realize that if you have two concepts of the same color, it's a bit, it's a bit a waste space to just type like black 25, black 25, then black 50. So if it's the same, right, you can just skip and then just do the two uh, percentage. So that's that's good. There are a few additional things that. Never mind, we can can skip. If you're interested, this this set of notes is inside our GitHub repo, but I'm, I know nobody see, I, I know nobody goes on. It's just like y'all say, you know, oh, you should go to conferences, like, don't want. Online got video. Y'all say you'll watch, you never watch one. I know, y'all don't watch the videos one. So that's why I'm force feeding you all this. Um, you, if you are quite cutting edge, you may or may not also have Safari technology preview installed on your computer. Actually, this, this browser is very good because what happens is all the experimental features that the WebKit engineers shove in, right, you'll get first. So I think the, the environment thing came up in uh, STP first as well. So it's, uh, it's, if you're, you're running on a Mac, like just install it just to like poke around and see what new things there are. What they have done is color level 4 introduced a new syntax for RGB. So that's in. Now for gradient color stops, you can use cup. So for those of you who like to make your gradients like really, really complicated and everything, uh, you can even use Calc to sort of do some calculations, which is nice. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, the rest of this, right, is turns out that during the, during the holidays, the working group actually worked very hard and then they upgrade a lot of specs. So how I do, if you're new to this, how I do about the spec, I don't go through the, I don't go through what changed. I, I just mention the spec sort of to give you an idea of what exists in CSS. So the first thing that, that is, I put first, CSS transforms module working draft updated. So all these specifications, right, CSS has to come from somewhere. So there's this working group that, that will, they will come up with the standards. And these standards will go through many, many revisions before they're like official. So there's a working, there's a discussion, then they'll first come up with a working draft. And then one is like, they'll keep working on it, keep asking questions, raise issues. After it's a bit more stable, it become a candidate recommendation. And then after that, it'll be like, oh, formal spec. So it's quite a long process because they, they try to cover as many edge cases as possible before making it standard. So that's why even if some of the, some of the properties here, you probably been using it for a long time or you realize hey, actually it's not, it's not like stable, stable, it's like candidate recommendation because it's, it's an ongoing process. If we waited until everything was stable, stable, then you'll get nothing. Um, so right now, the transforms module level one working graph. So transforms has been around forever, but it's still a working graph because there's still a lot of things to work through. Recently got updated, so, so um, that will be covered later in the talk. Not going to talk about it. There are, there are a couple of uh, specs that are interesting because they are not only applicable to CSS. So these are those that do not have a CSS in front of it. For example, motion path. Motion path module basically is this uh, spec that defines how you can animate an object along a path, which you can't really do at the moment because they are working on this. But I think it's, a, it's something that developers want that you would like to be able to animate something along a sort of a, a path that's something other than a straight line. Because right now you can, you can, you're generally doing, you can straight line it or something. Other, if you want to animate something along a path, you have to use some library. So they are thinking that it might be a good idea to let this be possible in CSS. So there's a motion path module. I think this it applies to more than just CSS. So there is a like general motion path module. There's also a filter effects module. And this is, this will work, apply to uh, SVG as well. But so filter effects is basically um, what, how you can change your, the, the sort of like the rendering and the color of your, your image or, or any graphic. So you can do the, the blurs, the grayscale, the 
CPI effect or that covered under filter effects. So because it also applies to SVG, that is, is a, it's like a more of like a general filter effects module. And there's a geometry interfaces uh, module. So this one also applies to SVG. So basically, if you do anything like ha that has the polygon function, ah, this is covered here. And for this, this specs, right, they are very focused for implementers, meaning for the people who use the browsers, not so much for for people like us. But I mean, it's still interesting to to know, like, if you're in, like interested, like, how these things come about, right? Then you, you can go, come and refer to this, um, cause this a lot more technical than than say the specification for Flexbox or for Grid. Those are ra quite readable because they help. CSS users understanding. Then there are some that are like these are very, very technical for implementers. So you you don't read their mind. Um, there's a fragmentation module. So fragmentation module, um, I think most of you would have encountered some part of it if you have used like anything that has to do with break. That's covered under the fragmentation module. Um, this is work coming along quite nicely because there are instances where you have like a chunk of content and then you you want to break them into separate sections, that kind of thing. Uh, that's covered under the fragmentation module because it's quite complicated to implement. Uh, there's quite a lot of discussion going on it, but this might see quite a lot of changes this year. So I'll probably talk about it some, somewhere along the lines. So, for, oh, it's not 34, it's 4. Anyway, so how these levels work, right? Because long, long ago, CSS was one huge 500 page document. So to update it, it was a very um, tedious endeavor. So sometime in 2000, they decided to split all these into modules. So at like they can split the work and they can also like split the updates. And for some things, they realize that it's too complicated, they will move it into the next level. So some you see uh, they're only at level one, but some they are like level three, even level four, like media queries can go up, already go up to level five. What this just means is that there are some things that are new or they've discussed then they realize that they can't, it's like agile. This is like CSS development agile style. So anything that this sprint cannot goes to the next level. So that's how these levels work. There's no such thing as CSS 4, CSS 5, no, no, no. It last time got CSS 1, CSS 2 because of this like huge document. Now don't have now. Ah, don't be, don't, don't, don't be misled. So got fra fragmentation is for chunks of content. Then the text module uh, handles text itself and also text breaking and text form. So your like, text transform capitalized, uppercase, that one goes under the text module. So they are very organized people, organize everything into nice things. Um, box alignment got updated. So what box alignment does is that it's, it's a, I personally, one of my favorites is box alignment because it makes it a lot simpler to align boxes. Because what, what, what do we do when we do front development? Our job involves aligning boxes. Half the time, you're just trying to align boxes to where you want. So this is a spec that came up when Flexbox came about. Because how it used to be is that when CSS first came out, when, when the web first came out, only text was important. So it was relatively easy for you to sort of adjust things along the, along the text axis. But after a while, people started using it for more complicated designs. And then they wanted to like adjust things all over the place. But they realized that, oh, sorry, browser cannot do this kind of thing. So when, when Flexbox, Box Alignment and Grid, right, these three specs actually came about after the fact, after a lot of users gave input to the, to the people who made browsers saying that, hey, you cannot just let us do things along the line axis easily, then everything else is hacked. Use, Use float, use JavaScript, use anything, cannot, cannot. So then they came up with these three, three specs that allow, uh, make it much easier to build CSS layout. So that's box alignment. So from there, right, box, box model also got into its own category. So box model just defines your, like, board, your content, content border padding margin, all that specified in box model level three. And they are, I think, I don't know, 511, CSS properties as of last year, so I think this year probably a bit more already. So all this is in a snapshot if you just want to like see how vast CSS is. There's actually a total like listing of all the CSS properties. So you can take a look, they updated it. It's very recent. Then the last three are pretty interesting CSS related articles that came out between December and now. Uh, there's, the first one covers the figure element. So figure fit caption and how to use it 
whilst maintaining accessibility for screen readers. That's good. There's uh, something called CSS hyphenation. So basically, you can force content to hyphenate at certain places. And then there's also CSS position sticky. Um, CSS position sticky is like, you can do the sticky header thing without JavaScript. But um, this is a very good explanation of how it works because I think it's not it's not straightforward. Like for example, if you position sticky on only one thing, right, it won't it won't it won't stick. And there's a reason for that, and this guy explains it very well. So if you're interested and if you use that, you can go and read this article. Yes, you have been force fed 15 minutes and more of uh, CSS news. So it's time to uh, bring on the main show. Uh, Mr. Dominic come to talk to us about CSS in JS.